Okay, so now that you know how to get your theoretical uh, concentration of DNA or th uh, theoretical yield of DNA rather, let's now look at how to calculate uh, the experimental concentration and yield for the DNA that you extracted. The same exact calculations or similar to these calculations are done for RNA as well. I'm just giving you examples using the DNA. So to do this, you want to go ahead and pick out the columns that contain your uh, concentration, so your, cal uh, your uh, information for your extracted RNA and DNA. You also at the same time might want to go ahead and cal uh, copy uh, the information for your partner group as well to make it easier to compare later on. I'm going to go ahead and copy just mine so I can use that as an example. Um, and here it is. I'm going to go ahead and put it into a new sheet just so I can keep track of these. Um, I'm going to copy it like so. And then I'm going to go back and I'm also going to copy the information out here just to make sure that I know what I am going to be doing, what sample is where and why. <clears throat> so it's under sheet two. No, where is it? I lost it. There we go. And there they are. Okay. So let's go ahead and start. Now what you also need is the information about which sample is where and that's this last column so go ahead and copy this as well okay so to begin with let's first concentrate just on looking at my DNA numbers and that's going to be my A260 so I'm going to go ahead and mark all the A260 that's the nucleic acid component of your sample so I'm gonna go ahead and take that now you uh, don't have a standard curve as such for your DNA or RNA however the values still need to be within a particular range for them to be quantified accurately and that range um, in most cases is somewhere from 0.1 to about 3.5 numbers above 3.5 are beginning to plateau off sometimes more so than others the spectrophotometer in our lab, uh, the highest value that it can read is about 4. That means that 3.5, anything above that is definitely going to be in that plateau range and will not be quantified well. So you want to take something less than that. So here is my DNA stuff down here. The milliQ, that's the first one, that's my blank. So I want to go ahead and reduce, remove the blank value from all my other. Now, if you look at the blank values, they're very different for each one of your uh, each one of your wavelengths. So you want to make sure that you actually are taking out the correct blank value from each one of your uh, wavelengths. So when you're looking at these absorbents, you want to go ahead and take the corresponding uh, blank value uh, and subtracting it from the others. So I want to do that for my DNA. When I look at my DNA, I see that 110 is 0 0.441, my 1 half is 2.181, and my um, undiluted is 3.7. So does that make sense? Mm, kind of, sort of, yeah. Well, my undiluted is 3.7. When I look at the 1 half, it should be about half. It, so 2.1 seems to be a little bit more than half. And it could be either that I didn't dilute it well, you know, I made an accuracy issue, or it could be that this value up here, the undiluted is uh, somehow not right. It's telling me less than it actually is. I can also look down at my 110, and it should be one-tenth of whatever is up here. So I would think it should be about 0.37. Here, it's 0.441. So again, a little bit higher than what I would have expected. And when I look at it that way, this makes more sense compared to here, you know, that it is one-fifth of my one-half up here. So this seems, these two seem to correlate much better than the undiluted. So definitely I don't want to use the undiluted. It's not going to give me the right number. Uh, so I can use my one-half or I can use my one-tenth. I'm going to go ahead and use the one-half. 
So first thing I want to do is take my one half absorbance for 260, that's 2.181, and subtract my blank from there, and that's 0 0.057. So this is my E260. Now for DNA, the conversion factor is that for each, um, the conversion factor says that 50 microgram per mil of DNA is going to give you an absorbance of one and that's what I have to work with so if I put that on one side and say equal to x over you know 2.124 so I can solve for x um, so I'm gonna say equals this multiplied by 50 divided by 1 um, and this is giving me 1 per 1 ml now, I also know that it is 1,000 microliter in each ml. So I could just do 1,000 and get that number this way. Mm, I did something wrong. Equals this, multiplied. I didn't put the multiplication sign there. So this tells me that I have 0 0.1062 microgram per microliter of DNA. That's my DNA concentration right so this is my DNA concentration in microgram per microliter now if I wanted to see how much of this was per mil I could just convert it you know back to ml by just simply multiplying it by thousand so I could say you know I have this number multiplied by 1000 and this will give me 106.2 and this is how much mix, uh, micrograms per milliliter I've got extracted in my sample. Fine. Now, so you can do it either way. Now, I want to know, well, how much exactly did I extract? So my experimental yield is going to depend on how much did I dissolve my DNA pellet in. So for you guys according to the protocol it should be 125 microliter if that's what you dissolved in that's your answer if you dissolved in 100 or 200 whatever that number is that you resuspended your dna pellet in that's how much your total volume of dna was so i'm going to go ahead and multiply this number by the 125 in the protocol right to get the total yield. Now, to do that, because I have microliter of sample, I wanna multiply with this number, right? Microgram per microliter, because the first number is in microgram per microliter, and I have 125 microliter. So I wanna multiply that number, the concentration in microgram per microliter with the number of microliters that I had. And this is my total yield. So my total yield is 13.275 micrograms of DNA. Now, if I were to look at, you know, you'll be like, hey, wait a minute, that's not what it should be. You used a different number earlier. Yes, I, this was just a hypothetical situation. So obviously that you cannot compare. I have extracted more than there should be. However, that may be the case. If that is the case, maybe you do extract more than you expected. Think about what might have caused that. Think about what type of cells you had and how that could have affected it. So that's what you would do. And then to calculate the RPD again, you want to do the same thing as what you've done before. That you want to do absolute value of theoretical minus uh, you know experimental minus theoretical which in our case you know I'm just using that as an example even though it's incorrect um, but just to give you the formula divided by the average of the two values so you want to do this plus 5.75 divided by 2 and then you multiply this number by 100 to get the percentage and it's 79.10 obviously because the numbers are so different um we are not really looking for that 
you know 10% RPD in this case we are just looking for whether you did the calculations correctly or not